Eva, we're very excited because we do see the potential to help embryologists select the best embryo, which will not only move the IVF field forward by providing very quantitative information, but more importantly, to help patients see the reality of their dream and bring home a healthy baby. The early research behind oxygen started at the Stanford Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. One of the goals of the research early on at Stanford was to understand basic human embryology from a scientific perspective. We knew from the very beginning that the work we were doing could directly impact IVF patients and outcomes in the clinic. During the early research at Stanford, we looked at a lot of different parameters to help us understand human embryo development, including the morphology-based parameters that are used in IVF clinics today. It became really clear to us early on that it was the dynamic properties of the human embryo that were the most predictive of their viability. Ultimately, we narrowed it down to three parameters that could collectively on day two predict blastocyst formation on day five. And those three parameters are the duration of first cytokinesis, the time from first to second mitosis, and the time from second to third mitosis. We identified very specific timing windows around each one so we could use them as a predictive tool for the embryos. Based on the research that we did at Stanford, we developed a really unique understanding of the critical events that can define success or failure. And at Oxygen, we're focused on translating that scientific knowledge into a commercial product that can help improve outcomes in the IVF clinic. So the really unique components of the product are the dynamic imaging data, the three predictive parameters we identified at Stanford, and then a computer vision algorithm that can extract those predictive parameters and make an automated assessment of blastocyst formation. The whole EVA system was designed to fit into the IVF workflow without having to replace or remove any of their existing equipment. The microscopes are small and light enough to fit on the shelf of an unaltered existing IVF incubator. And the Petri dish was designed to look and feel just like a regular IVF dish, except it has an array of micro wells in the center to hold the embryos in place during imaging. And then the entire image capture and image analysis process is automated, so the embryologist doesn't have to sit through and try to make manual measurements. I have been looking at the embryo on the microscope and based on that limited information, that limited observation, I have to make a decision about the fate of the embryo. I really see the potential of the contribution of this technology to the field. Um, the reason is the multiple rates is really high, you know, from uh, IVF and it's our challenge. But the clinical dilemma is we need to reduce the number of embryos to transfer, but at the same time, we need to maintain the high success rate. Using this technology, we can improve her chance to get pregnant just by one try, because we can improve the selection. So out of a cohort of embryo, I have a higher chance to select the very best embryo to put back within this cycle. So for her chance, it's much higher. We're at the tip of the iceberg with regards to what we've found. And both um, Oxygen and the clinics that we'll be working with, we will have a great opportunity to continue to do research to do data mining on the clinical data, and to continually refine both the parameters, um, other characteristics of the patients, and really be able to provide doctors and the IVF clinical directors with information that will help them make decisions. Mm -hmm.